Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to uh, another episode of Real Talk Huntsville. You know, if they could just listen in before we start recording. It would be the best be or a, worst part of the show, depending on your level of entertainment. It could, it could be a lot more entertaining. But anyway, <laughs> welcome back in. I'm Tim Knox, along with Kim Savage. We are from Revolved Realty, and this is Real Talk Huntsville, the show where we talk about Huntsville. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I, I cannot complain. I have a brand new thing that I brought in. Uh, this is my favorite Christmas, Christmas present. Mouse pad. Mouse pad of my grandsons. I now, love it too. Warren losing his mind, well, Santa Claus posing, and then Archer making that face. He's so. sitting on a strange <laughs> man's <laughs> lap who probably smells like reindeer. Well, like, you know, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Like, so really, Warren is the smart one. Stranger danger, Santa. So anyway, <laughs> my favorite right. uh, Christmas gift, and I carry it with me throughout the office. He really does. <laughs> I, just I use can vouch it for that. Wherever. So how are uh, how are things with you? Things are well. We had um, an agent luncheon today yeah. out at the camp, which um, I told you about when I came in. And, I, said and we, I didn't know what that was. We went to the camp, and Tim said, "What? You what's went the camp? camping? Like what? What's going on here? <laughs> you were at a park? Like were you in an RV? <laughs> There, there is so much going on here that I literally can't keep up. Well, I think here's the thing, you know, sometimes too, and I'm just going to call out your gender, the male species. <laughs> sometimes you know what things are, you just don't don't know what they're called, right? Yeah, so I do I that a lot. So if I said the place on University Drive where Trader Joe's is, where right. the mall used to be, right. you'd be like, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Oh, the camp. But it's called the camp, <laughs> Mid-City District, okay. right? So it's, the camp is a restaurant? The camp is an area oh, okay. with restaurants in it so you got <laughs> you, got you to, have to use the international you have to do sign this for yes. area people in rwanda go oh it's in it it's the camp <laughs> yeah so well that's pretty good yeah i mean th there's so many new places popping up that and honestly i am not i'm not a foodie you're not we we actually had someone on facebook uh add us to a foodie huntsville group oh I saw that. Yeah. Because they were asking you where are the best places to eat. And you're I'm like, like, I'm my gonna house. have to defer to, <laughs> to my kitchen and the Kim. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't really go out much. You know, my my daughter Sierra, she's a foodie. Okay. She she had a, a chicken rating for a long time. The top mm. ten chicken places in town. Mm -hmm. Welcome to, to my house. Yeah, but, I have that rating too. Yeah. But Chelsea I'm, is kind of a foodie too though, isn't she? You know, here's the funny thing about, daughters. here's the funny thing about Chelsea, who you'll see in just a little bit here on the show. Um, when she was young, little, growing up, all she ate was uh, chicken nuggets and french fries. I had a very limited diet as a kid too. I think a lot of kids are like that though. A lot no. of kids are not like, is it Archer that eats Ar like sushi Archer, and Archer, my grandson, everything? this one. Well, actually both of them will eat anything. Okay, my kids, not so much. I think Literally they'll grow like out of it. three things. And one of those is like Scooby Snacks. Really? Is what, you know, when they're <laughs> dog treats? When they're, no, they're, they're, they have a dog on them. They have Scooby, but they're kids. Okay, see, I missed those too. <laughs> yeah, Archer will go to like a Mexican restaurant and they'll get literally a bowl of like pickled jalapenos. Oof. And he just pops them like, M and M's, mm. not me, not I, me, guys. But yeah. but yeah, I'm I'm not a foodie. But that's one thing that we are going to talk about. I think we could fill up a whole show just talking about all the new restaurants here and things like that that are going on. We but could do a show a just clueless. on like best burger in Huntsville, best chicken wings in Huntsville, best pizza mm. in Huntsville. Mm. Like I think we could do a show on each of we those. We could. What is your things? favorite burger? Um, my favorite burger, you're probably going to laugh if I tell you this. It's All right, I won't drink until you tell me. <laughs> it's probably a Jack's. <laughs> really? Jack's? It has a good burger. Like, it's cheap. It's a good burger. It's cheap. You know, cheap. it's a decent burger. Yeah. I mean, other than that, you know, it's going to be like a gourmet burger. Like a... <sighs> you know, I like I like Five Guys, yeah, which Five is just your basic good... But I'm a big fan of uh, Farmhouse. Farm burger. Farm burger. Farm burger. Farmhouse. Too. Or farmhouse. I go out to the farmhouse by the camp <laughs> and have farmhouse, uh, farm burger, whatever the hell it's called. Farm uh, burger. Really is good. good. Really good. They are good. They are good. But yeah, you know, so. I don't know. I feel like sometimes if you want a burger, you just want like a less than ten dollar burger. Yeah. You know the uh, the big burger. What's the big chain out west? In and out. In and out burger. They just relocate. They just uh, opened one in Nashville. Yeah, in Franklin, and I think. Every, which is, what, an hour and a half north? Everybody's talking about driving up 
to get a oh there'll be a line burger. i mean you won't be yeah. able to it'll be like the bucky's opening you won't be able to get near <laughs> that place yep we'll just <laughs> we'll plan a day trip you know the thing about in and out not to focus too much on that but um you know didn't it start out i heard that like had, they had like three menu items so it was like a burger a cheeseburger and fries yeah very that was simple. it yeah but now it's like a much more extensive yeah menu. well supposedly they're the best you know which burgers i loved as a kid we'll get to the show in just a second uh, did you ever hear of Dubs Burgers? No. Was that before your time? Before my time. Dubs Burgers. Dubs was a little burger joint in Athens. Okay. And they had the best greasy hamburgers. I mean, the grease, you would go over there and get burgers, and they would be in a brown paper bag. Mm. And by the time you got home, the bottom was just <laughs> covered in grease. What about, isn't there a place called Penn's Burgers? Penn's Indicator. Yeah. Now, here's an interesting thing. We, we need to do a trip to, to Penn's. What they do is they, if I'm not wrong, they cook the hamburgers on a griddle, but then they cook like a bunch of them. And then when someone orders one, they put them in boiling water or is it maybe okay. boiling, boiling grease, I think actually, because they're really <laughs> greasy, but they are, Double they're grease. delicious. I mean, they, well, they cook know, them and then they drop them in hot grease to warm them up. You can't go wrong with extra grease or extra butter or extra mayo. Uh, my body agrees or... with you. 100 percent so <laughs> well, um, this is the burger episode but it, we'll, we might have to circle back to it more, was yeah more about burgers we, about we will burgers. do a foodie episode I think one we day will. so we'll do many. Uh, let's talk about what's going on here in uh, in town uh, let's do a really quick little uh, wrap up or a synopsis of the uh, the real estate market okay. we are real tours revolved realty does sponsor the show um you know we're kind of at a slowdown here mm -hmm. it is the uh, the winter time mm -hmm. uh interest rates uh so i went back and looked at the average home prices here and our four, four main metros are huntsville madison decatur and athens uh in huntsville average home price last month was uh 284,000. madison 413 athens 382,000, which is a big jump from uh, the month before yeah. and uh, Decatur 255,000 now uh, that is our our average home price here there's a really big difference between Huntsville Madison and everything else Madison typically has the higher mm -hmm. property values more in demand more new housing but uh, yeah Huntsville uh, was down from the month before but Madison way up and the Decatur average home price too you know, Decatur's Decatur, up Decatur is up too. Athens mm -hmm. is up. Everybody is always yeah. asking me about is things slowing down or the prices crashing. Well, yeah, you know, the prices have, have leveled off. They're backed mm -hmm. off a little bit, but we are not seeing uh, the big dip in prices like a lot of other places. We had a lot of homes for sale in the last month, 269 in Huntsville, 123 in Madison, 89 in Athens, and 79 in Decatur. So, and that was... Uh, uh, what all of those were down. We had a lot of home sales. Days on market. That's the big one here that because houses are starting to sit a little longer. Mm -hmm. You know, last year everybody was used to houses going in one day or mm -hmm. less. less. Um, mm -hmm. Average days on the market in Huntsville: sixteen days, twenty days in Madison, twenty-eight in Athens, and twenty-three in Decatur. I have realtors call me every day, going, "The house has been on the market a week. What, yeah. what do I do?" What's wrong? Yeah, when I got in it, the average days on the market five years ago were like 45 to 60 days. Yeah. So this is still nothing. So um, we are still very much in a seller's market here. Uh, Huntsville, uh, 1.3 months, Madison, 1.3, Athens, 1.6, and Decatur, 1.3, meaning that if nothing else comes in the MLS, we're out of houses in a month and a half. Mm -hmm. So it is still very much a seller's market, but sellers are willing to negotiate now. So. Mm -hmm. Very good. All so good there we go. The market here yeah. continues on. It's about to pick up. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the rocket. Yeah. So a little <laughs> backstory really quickly. I was confused about the rocket, <laughs> <laughs> which rocket we were actually talking about. There's a rocket at the Space and Rocket Center. Right. I thought that's the rocket that was coming down. <laughs> I drove by it and I was like, I don't see anything wrong with this well, rocket. The, the, here's what's going on with the rocket. The rocket in question is one of the, yeah. what is it, the Saturn rocket? It's the Saturn and rocket. And it is at the Alabama-Tennessee state line at the, they call it the rest stop rocket. The rest stop at rocket. At the Welcome Center. 
It's been there, what, 40 years? Yeah, something like that. And so it's not the rocket at the Space it's and Rocket not Center. It's that rocket. I thought it was that rocket, and I was thinking, what's wrong with these people <laughs> taking know. down this very nice rocket? <laughs> uh, now that we know which rocket is which, what, what's going on with the rocket? So the rocket is is in bad shape there. Um, mm -hmm. So it's going to need to be disassembled. Um, they were saying that it would be over $7 million that if they were going to take it apart, put it back together. Right. And they're just saying $7 million is just too pricey. Too so NASA owns the rocket. It's been on loan for a while at the Welcome Center. But now it is time for the 168-foot rocket, which has been, you know, it's been quite a welcoming presence yeah. for a while. Mm -hmm. but. Now it is officially time for it to come Yeah, down. and this this is a rocket that actually flew in space. It did. In what, 75, 75. something yeah. like that? Yeah, it was used to carry Skylab aus astronauts, astronauts. In, astronauts <laughs> into orbit <laughs> in 1975. Wow. So it mm -hmm. went up into space. They brought it back. They put it there at the Welcome Center. And it was mm -hmm. kind of cool because if you're coming from Tennessee, you'd see that rocket mm -hmm. way down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, it's in pretty sad shape. It, it yeah. really needs. But you know, there was some controversy because, you know, the uh, there's a law here in Alabama that you can't take down monuments or something right. like this. And they were considering this rocket a monument. And I think they finally decided, no, it's, it's not, not a monument. monument. It's, but yeah, so. there was some question over it yeah. for sure. And some debate as to what to do with it. Should it come mm -hmm. down? Should it not? But apparently it's, it's coming down. But they are going to look for a replacement. Something, Are they going to do? They're going to do a new rocket a replacement. I don't know. They didn't say there would be another rocket. I bet they it's not going to be seven million dollars for a replacement. <laughs> they said it might be just um, a replica. It might be another rocket, but yeah. they're not sure at yeah. this time. And there is a, a, a rocket at the Space and Rocket Center. There were three of them. There's one, the one at the Welcome Center, the one at the Space and Rocket Center here, and then there's one at Kennedy Space Flight Center. Mm. I would imagine they take much better care of them here. Yeah. Than they did at the Welcome Center. <laughs> well, they said they're not just meant to be outdoors all the time. True. They're meant to, I just, you know, go to space. Well, come they back, tarnish. And done. You know, you got birds sitting up there every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's not pretty. You can't so. get out there and clean a 160 feet <laughs> yeah. rocket. Every well, there day. were a lot of folks that didn't want it removed, but I mm -hmm. think, you know, that NASA's responsible for it. It's mm -hmm. their rocket. So yeah. they're going to have to uh, disassemble it. It'd be interesting. I wonder what they're going to do with it. How many times have we said rocket? So 173. <laughs> I have a counter. There's a. Anyway, really interesting what's going on with the rocket the now rocket. that we know which yeah. rocket we're talking about. So if about. you haven't seen the rocket and you want to see it and you're in the area, now might be the time to go. You better hurry up. <laughs> yeah. Good yeah. deal. All what right. else is going on? Well, I wanted to just mention um, Orion, which we all the Orion know. Amphitheater. The Orion Theater is yep. kind of a new presence in Huntsville. Mm -hmm. um, they are kind of, I guess, filling space a little bit um, between, you know, concerts. You're not going to mm -hmm. necessarily have a lot of concerts yep. in January. Yep. But they have what's called Winter Park. Um, I haven't been out there yet, but it seems pretty cool. They have ice skating. They even have like these igloos that you can rent and you get food and drinks That's in there. Cool. So it's like a whole winter wonderland experience. Yeah. Well, that was a question I have when I, they were talking about building this outdoor amphitheater here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's outside. So yeah. it's, you know, uh, privy to the weather. I know we saw Stevie Nicks there. Mm. Um, man, she was great. That was like she a sold-out like, show. She was like 78. Yeah, that was our anniversary present. I got us like six row tickets. Mm. I had to hawk some stuff. <laughs> you pay, had to sell a bunch the of best part, for that. The great thing about it was Stevie Nicks still sounds the same, but she's like in her 70s. Mm -hmm. Remember when she was young, she would do that twirl mm -hmm. thing? Well, now she's like really careful, slowly doing one she's probably one more circle. Of just like, yeah. She's like on a walker doing her <laughs> circle. But boy, it was a great concert. But you know, I wonder. Okay, are they going to shut it down in the winter? Where are they going? Well, yeah. no, they're they're making good use of it. When, they are. Uh, that the winter park thing sounds really cool. The yeah. fact that they've got a uh, they took all the chairs off the floor and made a skating rink was brilliant. Yeah, that was brilliant. Uh, as far great, as I'm concerned, great use of space. We I need don't to get know us how an to ice, and go drink. I don't know how to ice skate. So. Oh, I do. But I know how to use an igloo. I bet you do. Drinks. Uh, yeah, you can rent a private igloo to enjoy cocktails, a charcuterie. Charcuterie. A charcuterie board. What my grandson Archer calls a shark tutorie. Shark tutorie is nice uh, too. We used to call it uh, beef stick and cheese. So uh, <laughs> sounds like a lot of fun. One of the things that's uh, really cool: Allison Krauss and Robert Plant mm -hmm. are coming in April. Now the weather will be nice in April, so that'll mm -hmm. be a good one. I just find it. Interesting that the the lead singer of Led Zeppelin is 
recording and on tour with Alison Krauss. Well, That's kind of like us. <laughs> The old fart and the young thing, doing a show. Well, you know, you have to balance each other out, right? But, you know, two amazing voices. Yeah, that totally. Will be, I think that'll be a pretty awesome show. I, I mean, I love their music. I've, I've listened to their recordings. They've been doing it together for years. But, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, he's got to be close to 80, and he still sounds really good. I bet all the kids will think it's just like new music, though. Like, my kids have, like, Rolling Stones and stuff, like T-shirts, really? and they don't realize that Rolling Stones yeah. or Led Zeppelin are, like, old bands. Yep. Well, <laughs> you know, when, when uh, my daughter Sierra was younger, we'd be in the car, and I'd have the rock station on, and she'd be singing along to these old songs. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how do you know that? She's like, mm -hmm. Guitar Hero. Right. <laughs> that yeah, makes sense. Yeah, it makes complete Guitar sense. Guitar Hero. Yeah, so uh, the Orion is uh, really kind of a hopping place, and it's a yeah. really neat venue. We had a really good time there. So um, yeah. they are making great use of it, and uh, they're going to book it out. But we're, we're getting a lot of these new venues here. You know, mm -hmm. we've got the Orion. Of course, they redid the uh, the Von Braun Center. Mm -hmm. We're getting more stadiums mm -hmm. as well. We've got, what is it, Town Madison, the stadium there yes. with uh, Toyota Field. Toyota Field, mm -hmm. uh, which <laughs> is where the Trash Pandas play. Yes, and there's Mars Music Hall. They have some great performances yep. there yep. downtown. Yep. So yeah, lots of entertainment and yeah. variety. And, and we're getting the uh, they're redoing the old Joe Davis Stadium for a right. soccer team. Yeah, that'll be fun. They call it football. Football, football. soccer. Well, do you call I mean, it football or soccer? I mean, I don't call it anything because I don't know anything about sports. <laughs> <laughs> I call it that, that thing you do out on the field with the ball. She doesn't know about feet. rockets and she <laughs> don't know about sports, ladies and gentlemen. I know uh, about food, though. There you go. What else yeah. is going on? <laughs> well, all right. So big news, more big news for little old Huntsville. Wow, this is from the Huntsville Business Journal has posted this article today. It says... The Rocket City is starting off 2023 on the same note as 2022, and it has been named one of the top five of the country's most prosperous cities in 2023. I believe that. Go yeah. us. So, What's that based on? It's from a study <clears throat> by myelisting.com, which ranked all of the country's metros with a population of at least 200,000 people. Mm -hmm. 227 um, areas qualified. Um, they use six different metrics. Uh, percentage change in population growth, median household income, yep. etc. Um, anyway, so Huntsville was named in the top five. The other contenders were um, Provo, Utah. Or Utta, as my daughter <laughs> calls it. Boise City in Idaho. Mm -hmm. um, Fayetteville, Arkansas, and Austin, Texas. Well, good. Go us. So, yeah, another sort of notch in the belt for um, little old Huntsville. You know, we get on a lot of top ten lists. We do. You know, top ten best places to start a business, top ten places to raise a family. Mm -hmm. Now, this one. Yeah, and it, so one of the things that it did mention was that the article mentioned was we have a really low unemployment rate of only 2%. Isn't that something? If you want a job here. Like, I was kind of surprised. Like, that is really, really yeah. low. Um, and 43% of its residents have at least one college degree. At wow. least one at college degree. At least one. Degree. If you have more than one, you have too much time on your hands. Right? And <laughs> poverty rate was 10% in yeah. 2021. So that that un unemployment rate of 2%, 2 is... 2%. That is crazy. Well, it's one of the lowest in the country. If you, if you want to work, you can find a job here. Absolutely. And if you're not qualified to work... You can be a real yeah, That's right. We're hiring. <laughs> We're hiring. <laughs> the bar is so Come low. Come on down. Come <laughs> yeah. on down. Yeah. yeah. So, but, you, you. yeah, but that's that's good news for us. I mean, the yeah. population growth here, you know, it, it kind of all falls together because we have all these folks relocating here for all these high-tech jobs, mm -hmm. which are high-paying jobs. People. So it kind of stacks up. But mm -hmm. that's great news. Go us. Go us. Go us. So we're, you know, we're, we're growing. Speaking of realtors... You've got Were a realtor we? in the family. We do. We're going to do a, a, a quick clip. Uh, Kali, Kali, what's Kali Foster. Foster. <laughs> I, I was sad. <laughs> Forrester. I'm like, what the heck? Oh, close. Uh, close. One of our agents, Kali uh, Foster, does a, uh, an interview show, and he interviewed uh, Chelsea McKinney, who is uh, our partner here at Revolve, my oldest daughter, and Very the talented. mama Very talented. of the Golden Childs. Uh, Chelsea has been doing flips and remodels. I mean, since she was in high school, mm -hmm. um, just really talented. She's got a really great eye. She actually did a pilot 
for HGTV mm, back in the day. I remember. Thank God they didn't get it. <laughs> what a <laughs> right? nightmare. Yeah. Um, but Colley recently had uh, Chelsea on his show talking about things you can do to improve your curb appeal, yeah. that sort of thing. So uh, we're going to watch a clip of that. We've got about five minutes, some really great information, and uh, we'll be right back. Hey, guys, it's Colley here with uh, Team Foster at Revolve Realty, and we're here in the studio today with Chelsea McKinney. Uh, Chelsea is uh, one half of ownership of uh, Revolve Realty. Uh, she's also an agent, and I like to call her a friend as well. Yes. So uh, many people have asked me, you know, hey, if I'm going to put my house on the market, what are some things that I can do to make my house more marketable, to maybe even help in the value of the home? And so I've asked Chelsea to come. Chelsea does a lot of uh, investment here in the Huntsville area. She owns quite a few properties. She's done a lot of flipping in the area. So she has a pretty good idea of what to do in a home to kind of spruce it up, to make it look better, more presentable. And so I've asked her to come today to kind of share with us a little bit of her thoughts. Happy to be here. Thanks <laughs> for asking me. Um, well, really to get right into it, if you're good with that. Um, yeah. I think that we should start from the exterior. Sure. Okay. So um, curb appeal is everything. Uh, it's, it's the first impression a buyer is going to have for your home. And so, you know, as we get into the spring, into to March and April, which is when a lot of houses typically go on the market, that's a great time to plant some flowers, spruce up your flower beds, add some new mulch. New mulch goes a long way. It makes everything look so nice and tailored. Mm -hmm. Cut your lawn paint your front door, um, make sure that the bulbs in your outdoor <laughs> light fixtures work, yes. dump the bugs from the outdoor light fixtures. Um, cleaning, cleaning goes a long way. Sweep off your porch, get the cobwebs off of your columns. Um, if you want to spend a little money and, and don't feel comfortable doing it yourself, clean out your gutters. Yeah. Um, pressure wash or soft wash your siding. Um, I have even washed a roof before that had streaking. Mm -hmm. The roof was fine and just looked ugly. And so I paid to have somebody come and wash my roof and it's amazing the difference that it made. Sure. Um, so I think exterior wise, <coughs> just some general cleanup and some general spruce up goes, goes a long way. Um, you want to pressure wash your driveway, your sidewalks, make everything look nice and pristine. Um, I really think that's a good starting point. Right. Okay. So now kind of moving into the interior, mm -hmm. you know, there are certain rooms in the house that kind of become a selling point sure. in, in a home and namely probably your kitchen mm -hmm. and your bathroom, mm -hmm. at least the master yeah. bath. Maybe not so much a guest bath, but a master bath. Yeah. So what are some things that uh, an individual could do to spruce that up without breaking the bank? Okay, so there are varying degrees here. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have a spec home that was built 20 years ago and nobody ever put hardware on your cabinets, <laughs> that is such an easy thing and it is. it would probably cost you less than $150. You can get a template at Lowe's and you can get knobs for your kitchen cabinets and your bathroom cabinets. Okay. I'm telling you, I, we, um, we recently flipped a house and it was, you know, a spec home that was built probably 10 years ago and it had the original cabinets in it and nobody had ever added knobs or poles. And so we did and it mm. made a world of difference. Um, something as simple as that. Um, again, with the cleaning, cleaning goes a long way. Like take a toothbrush, and get around the toilet bowl and the <laughs> bolts on the bottom. Um, make sure there's no soap scum on your faucets. Um, I know, Kali, you and I had talked a little bit about like countertops. Mm -hmm. If you have money that you want to put into your house to see a return, you gotta be smart about it. Mm -hmm. um, if you have laminate countertops and you think, Oh, okay, I can spend, you know, $2,500 on new countertops. Do it with your buyer in mind. Your buyer will appreciate a granite countertop. However, that's not really what's in right now. It's not what has been in for the last few years. Mm -hmm. It's been all about quartz. It's been all about white with gray veinings, the movement. Um, 
And I know for a while there, I was a granite girl because quartz was like, it was like this new thing. Right. Um, and I just knew that it was more expensive than granite. So I wasn't going to put it in any of my flips. And now it's all I use because it's really not that much more expensive no, than not. granite. And it just looks beautiful. It's more neutral. It goes with everything. Um, so if you want to, if you want to uh, invest a little bit more, um, you can always change your countertops, mm -hmm. but there's always a caveat, right? Um, if your cabinets are 40 years old <laughs> and they are not in great condition, they've got, you know, scratches and, and the doors are falling off and the drawers don't function well, I would not spend money to put countertops on old cabinets that probably need to be replaced. Yeah. I would suggest maybe um, a concession for you know something that you could update sure. um, as far as as far as countertops or you know a concession to go towards new cabinetry or something like that um, if your cabinetry is in good shape and your countertops are in good shape you can do a tile backsplash in a weekend and even you can do it even if you <laughs> <laughs> um, subway tile is so classic and it's so beautiful pair it with some warm gray grout and you're you're good um, you can use something called like muscle bound if you don't want to use an actual, um, an actual like mastic, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't want to trowel it on, there's something called muscle bound and you buy it in sheets and you put it on your wall and it's got an intense stickiness right. and then you lay the tile directly on that. You grout it as normal, um, and you can get, um, tile cutters, like manual tile cutters that that don't make a big mess. They don't require, you know, water running over the tile to, to so something doesn't catch on fire sure. or spark a flame or whatever. Um, so a backsplash is easy, but you can also, you can also hire that out for a, you know, not a lot of money. Um, as far as flooring for a kitchen, um, some maintenance type items. Most of us have tile in our kitchens. You want to look for cracked grout or yeah. missing grout because you can go to Lowe's and you can buy grout caulk. It comes in a caulk tube, but it's grout. And you can, you know, if right. your grout is clean, <laughs> you can figure out what color it is right. and you can go get a tube of grout caulk and fill those in. And, and it just looks like you have maintained your home and, and you have maintained your home, even if it's right before you put it on the market. Sure. All right, great information. Yeah. Chelsea, Chelsea is just so smart, so Chelsea's talented. Chelsea's a natural on camera, too. She really is. So She's, got her, she got her mom's cheekbones. She does. She has yeah. a model face. Well, her, her mother, little known fact, was a news anchor here. Really? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. oh, she she okay. is uh, also the voice of, uh, she did some voice work for NASA back in the day. She's mm -hmm. the voice of the stealth bomber. Okay. She was the boy, voice of the Apache TAC helicopter. Really? Yeah. I didn't she's, know there she's even the, was she's a voice She's the voice in the air going, things. missiles locked. Oh, I love Prepare that. Prepare to die. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually had a, uh, a client who was a, he was a B-1B pilot. And he was telling this story about Bitch and Betty. That was the name they gave her. Really? And I'm like, guess what? I used to be married to Bitch and Betty. That's funny. I yep. bet that made for some interesting bar talk. Uh, it did. <laughs> it was really fun. So, but no, yeah. Chelsea has that uh, has that natural talent. So, yeah. hey, uh, I think that's going to do it for us. Hopefully, uh, you enjoyed uh, the show today. If you like what we do here, make sure you click on the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, uh, do the little bell. That way, you never miss another show. And if you are uh, interested in relocating here, or if you're already here and you need the assistance of the fastest growing independent brokerage in town, we're about at 100 agents. We're really close. We are. We need mm -hmm. to do something special for that 100th agent. We're going to have a celebration. We'll, we'll have a party. 100 agent party. And we'll party. have burgers. We will. Burgers. <laughs> oh, I see what you did. You brought it. That was oh, brilliant. So, anyway, guys, that is going to do it for us. If we can do anything for you, give us a call. Kim, as always, a pleasure. A pleasure to be here with you, Tim. Let's go have a burger. Let's do it. All right. Bye, guys.